the website, <laughs> and um, we might be able to point you to somebody who can do that for you. And one of the best three. Yeah. Uh, to spring forward off of her question, how would you describe the demographics of the review committee? Uh, let's see. Good question. Five people. Uh, five white guys. Yeah, it is five <laughs> white guys. Yeah. However, the. Uh... <laughs> You're an anthropologist. You know that's probably the question. Yeah, no, that's well, no, the honest no case. It is just five white guys. However, um, they're doing it on a ten-year basis at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, we're going to be rotating. Unfortunately, this time, this is just kind of the way that the cards fell. Um, we do, however, at least on the commotion side, strive to have um, a diverse group of people in the room with the evaluation committee. So we, we always have at least, you know, one or two women in with the committee uh, just to offer, you know, actual non-older white guy perspectives. So. We are should, aware should, that that's an issue, and uh, I should say I'm not on the committee. Yeah, we're not. Wondering you. Um, if you have a business on the side which is not affiliated, like with your university job, are you submitting it as like an individual at the university or as like a member of your business? So uh, the question is, if you have a business on the side, and if, does your proposal? come from that business? Yeah, so like I'm a staff member that has a business uh -huh. that is separate from my job at the university. Mm -hmm. So do I submit it as an individual of the university or can I submit it sort of like as a favorite of my business? Or does it not matter? So I would think from the, from the IP standpoint that you're still going to be a, a member of the university, right? And whatever's funded during the time period of the grant is there needs to be licensing talk uh, between you and the university. But uh, there's no if you've already got something going on, there's no from our side there's no prohibition against that. Yeah. And then right there in the back. Yeah. Uh, two very quick questions for Catalyst. If you have a great idea, but it doesn't get funded, can you still access the mentors so that you can develop it further? And two, in the application process, is there room to come in and thoroughly discuss one's idea if you don't know how to frame it? Do you provide that sort of service? So uh, the, the first question is, if you have a great idea and it doesn't get funded, can you access? Can you still have access to the mentors because? Oh, to the mentors, I yeah. see. So um, you, you know, you can write to us and um, we'll see. T those are typically for projects that already have a technology manager here. Um, so you would have to basically, uh, are you a staff member or a student? Or? Student. Um, so you would actually want to come in and talk to one of our technology managers at Comotion. Um, and then if, if you're working with one of them, then we can get you usually signed up with the mentors. Um, as for during the application process, um, at CoMotion, we are perfectly happy to talk to anybody, even on a one-on-one -on -one basis at any time, about their application prior to submitting it. So if you want feedback, if you want um, ideas, sounding board kind of stuff, we can't tell you, yes, you should apply or, or no, you shouldn't apply. But um, just write us, drop us a line at the email. And uh, we'll, you can come into our office and we'll sit down and, and talk for half an hour about what we can do with your application. Yeah. So it seems pretty clear how you evaluate ideas that are potentially revenue generating and that you do still fund ideas that aren't potentially revenue generating but maybe do some sort of social good. Correct. But can you elaborate a little bit on how those like social good proposals are judged? You mentioned something about sustainability a little bit earlier. Right, so the question is, uh, let's say you've got a proposal for a, a, a social good project, uh, not a revenue producing product. How are those judged? And uh, what I've seen in the past is that the, they're interested in making an impact and not kind of funding a one-shot deal, right? Like I want to do this once, it's going to cost 25K and then I'm done. Uh, they're really interested in funding ideas that eventually can impact you know, as many people as possible. And that gets to sustainability. So if you need, if you've got a, a project that's gonna do good for a lot of people and you need 25K to get it to this level where you can get further investment, right? So maybe it's below the radar of like the Gates Foundation or something like that. 25K gets you to a place where it would get that follow-on funding. That's 
crime, right? Uh, like I said, and if I haven't made it clear, uh, Amazon's not in this looking for our next product. In fact, we're kind of expressly in this not looking for our next product. Uh, if you generate our next product, A, that means uh, we should probably talk about hiring you. And uh, B, it means there's something wrong with, or we have 50,000 people working on the next product anyway, right? So we're in this to do uh, uh, things that are orthogonal to what we're doing now. And so those are you know, social good falls right in the middle of that. But what they want to see again is that kind of uh, thoughtful consideration of the project. And it's not just a, I need to you know, run off 25,000 copies or something. Uh, another good example of that might be back to the ASCA, the KUOW project. So in their project, they're not just holding these events, they're actually getting a toolkit together so that other nonprofits or schools or churches or other radio stations can actually take their methodology and hold these similar events in their communities. So, you know, they're not gonna make any money off of it, but they are gonna be able to distribute this, this concept, this model um, throughout the world. And I should say, just I'm gonna jump in before we run out of questions or whatever. There are uh, free t-shirts up here, you guys can ask. I didn't have a t-shirt can, so I didn't shoot an ask, uh, but they're, they're up here. Uh, but yeah, other questions? Yeah. eventually scale to the global level. Mm -hmm. Obviously 100,000 is going to facilitate that. So when you're applying, should you not ask for more than 100K and then go into the process that you said, show what 100K will get you? No, so, so I first, uh, this is our first time going through this kind of phase one, phase two process. And so the question is, if you have a project or a product that's going to take more than, say, 100K, which would be the, the cumulative amount of phase one and two, um, how do you handle that, right? And I think uh, just by talking to some of the, the committee folks, I think what they look for in phase one is, what's 25K gonna buy, right? right? What's the, what, how, how does the needle move at 25K? If this is gonna take $500,000, there's a segment that's gonna move at 25K, right? And you need to be clear about that. So, so I guess my question is, should I also present what even more? Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think it'd be uh, so. You can be clear that you're asking for 25k because okay. it's part of what I see the larger investment being, which is you know 500k, right? right? And this will move the needle this far. So, along. so go in with like a 100k plan, a 25k plan, but also go in with whatever size plan you need to go in with but have a real clear delineation on what the 25K will come for. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's Tens Hill, Gretchen, I didn't know. Do we want to still have some time for informal, one-on-one -on -one kind of discussion? Or? I think that if there are still the folks questions? who are raising their hand, let's have a couple more minutes and then we'll close. Okay. Two more minutes. Cool. And I can stick around. So one in the back. So going off of that, um, so so essentially we need to sort of research, let's say we're, we want to invent something that requires materials and mm -hmm. so forth. So we should sort of research what that would cost to generate one <coughs> one product of our invention. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's not, so the question is, if you don't have your whole team together, kind of what information should you bring about them? And I think in, in, it's not about number of the team, it's about capabilities that you'll need. Like if I'm, uh, if I'm a, a marketing person and I'm gonna build an app, then I need to tell the committee that I'm gonna have a dev for how, this many hours, right? And so it might be worth it to find uh, someone who knows about that missing capability and just ask them like a scoping question. You know, try to get that kind of data. Like you don't have to have them on the team, but if you talk to people, have you done your research to find out what that, the scope of that involvement is like, right? That makes sense? Yeah, so like it, if this is like, it, again, we'll take the marketing uh, example. If you're a marketing major and you've got an idea for an app, uh, right? and, and you, so you, you know you're going to need a dev to build it, um, do some of the research, talk to some, uh, some folks, and, and find out what's the general scope. 
right? Because that goes to your kind of your budgeting question. That goes to the thoroughness of your research. And that goes, and when I say research, I don't mean big R research, I mean kind of proposal research. Um, so that the committee can believe that you actually know what's going to have to happen. Okay, cool. One more? One more? Yep. So, not to be a difficult woman, but it is kind of a moment for difficult women. And I want to just challenge you guys in a really heartfelt and authentic way that it may not be possible for five white guys in a room to determine what social good is right now. And the idea that the social good is one of the evaluative platforms on a, on a grant like this, I think requires a clear institutional mandate for a more diverse evaluative committee. So if the University of Washington owns the kind of intellectual work that's being done from a grant like this, the University of Washington also has community guidelines around community principles and actions of inclusivity. And so there needs to be a discussion at a high level about how grants like this are evaluated from a diverse and inclusive perspective if social good really is a value that you guys want to be out there. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. From the UW side, I don't think that's a difficult <coughs> woman question at all. I totally yeah. concur. Um, these conversations are happening. I know that there's no, absolutely no reason for you to believe that fact, just based on the fact that there's a couple of white dudes up here. That well, I mean, to I you, give you guys the benefit of the doubt. Like, you're here, you're trying to do a good job. Like, we're kind of all on the same team, right? Yeah. But it, it also behooves me to say this needs to be done in our community. 